Hello, this is Samadan. Samadan doesn't have any gold. Samadan would like lots of gold. We are going to show him how to get started in gold making and learn to think like a gold maker. Welcome to my gold guide. In this episode, we are going to start from the very beginning on a brand new server at level 1. This is going to be part of a series where I go through the entire process of gold making, from these very humble beginnings and all the way to gold cap. So where do we start? One of the key things here is resources. The way to make gold in WoW is to sell things either to other players or to the non-player vendors. At this point we have nothing to sell and are too low level to collect valuable resources in the game. Our first goal here is to start playing the game, leveling and collecting resources and earning a little bit of money through handing in quests. At this stage it's fairly easy to let the game guide you through the initial quests. I'm focusing here on gold making aspects rather than teaching you how to play the game. If this is your first time playing WoW, I suggest you take your time and have fun. These starting areas are great for teaching you the mechanics of the game. I've got all my add-ons sorted here, I have Azeroth Autopilot helping me hand in quests, and another add-on that lets me loop faster, which is why you'll barely see the windows pop up. I have a video all about the add-ons I'm using, so if you want to get set up the same way, I'll put a link to those in the description below. So let's work our way through the initial quests. You'll see me change a few things around as I set up my add-ons and keys. I'm not going to go and try and speed run this or anything here, but as I've done a few of these quests a few times before, I want to be as efficient as possible. Now we have our first gold making decision. Some quests will give you a choice of reward at the end. Generally, you'll want to upgrade your gear as you go. Even more so in my case as I don't have any heirlooms. The second choice will be if I can sell something for more later on. Quest rewards are usually bind on pickup, so I'll never be able to sell them to another player. I'll always look at the vendor sell price of all the choices and pick the highest value one if I can. <laughs> I forgot this buff to stop you from dying when you hand in that quest. I wonder how many deaths there were before then. Now that we've moved on to our first central hub, here comes the first major thing we can do to help with gold making. We're going to pick up two gathering professions here, herbalism and mining. I've gone for these two because both give experience for every node you collect, and this druid is going to be my gatherer in the end anyway, so I might as well get them now. I'd actually recommend these two for most characters, even if you change professions later on, simply because it's extra XP and gold whilst you level. The herb and ore I'll be selling to other players, so I'll keep hold of them until I get to the auction house. I'm also going to pick up cooking here, just so I have it. A lot of the early stuff from cooking won't really sell to other players, but sometimes I can make something for a small vendor profit. I'll also grab fishing when I see the trainer. You'll see here I've turned on the sparkly setting, which makes it easier to see herbs in the long grass. By sparkling setting I mean you go into your interface, under display, and I've disabled outline mode. And then I've made sure that in my system, under graphics, effects, particle density, I've set this to ultra. And now I can see the herbs and all from miles away really easily. One thing here is to import data from GatherMate. You can see here it's marked the first two nodes I found on the map, but all the other potential nodes are not shown. So if we go into Interface, Add-ons, GatherMate 2, and Import, select Herbalism and Mining. No need to select the expansion, we'll take them all. And then click Import, and there we go. When I go to the map, now we can see all the herbs marked on the map and where they should spawn. Now whilst I'm making my way to my next location, I'm going to keep an eye on the mini-map to see if I can steer myself towards any potential nodes. Aha! Now we have our first major druid ability that's going to help with getting around the world faster. Now we can shapeshift into cat form. I'm going to change around my keybinds a little bit so Q and 3 are my go fast buttons. This makes travelling around so much faster because cat form adds 30% to our movement speed outside and sprint means we can move at nearly double run speed. A big part of the levelling process is getting from A to B, and travel time really matters and adds up. At this early point before we get mounts, every little boost to mobility helps. Ok, that's my first session done, and I'm back at a rested area, ready to sell my hard earned loot. As soon as I open the vendor window, Azeroth Autopilot has automatically sold my junk items for 2 silver. Those are all the things with a little yellow dot icon over them. Looking at the rest of my items, we have some herbs, silver leaf and earth root. 
They seem to have a really high min buyout price according to TSM. It would be lovely if they sold for that much, but we'll see once we get to the auction house. I'll save them in my bags until then. Linen cloth is useful to tailors. The vendor sell price here is 13 copper, but I could get much more in the auction house selling them for 15 silver. Small eggs have a decent price, we're going to keep hold of those. In fact, I'm going to keep all of these trade skill items for selling on the auction house. They all have a better price than selling straight to a vendor. Some have a pretty low sale rate, so they may not sell quickly, but we'll give it a go. Now the armour here is a tricky one. Sometimes people like to buy your initial starting gear items and would rather buy them than make a new character, which is why you can see these really inflated prices here. I've tried selling them before, but in the past I have not had much luck, so I'm actually going to pass on these and sell them straight to the vendor. Mainly to clear up bag space more than anything else. Healing herbs and spring water, these would normally be used whilst levelling, but it's so fast these days that I barely need them, so I'll sell these straight to the vendor and keep my bag space free. For the same reason I wouldn't be selling them to another player as well. So there we are, 45 minutes played, we're already level 9, we've got 15 silver in cash and some potential items to sell on the auction house when we get to our city. We've picked up some nice gathering professions and have our first speed boost travel form for getting around. It's a pretty good start I'd say. Next time we'll finish up the quests in this area and then move to the city where we can make use of the auction house and start looking for ways to make more gold. This is going to be an ongoing Let's Play series all about gold making, so please do subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll also be doing more in-depth videos on TSM 4.10, so watch out for those in the near future. Until next time, happy gold making, and I'll see you very soon.